I grew up in the country in County Cork. It wasn't a bother wandering through the fields, adventuring around the place, and the, the realities of life didn't really hit you at all because it was so carefree and lovely. I had a very content childhood. I had a very safe childhood, but I suppose there was always a little touch of melancholy about me. That's what my mother would say. I was eight and I started playing the guitar. I had written a song called I Wish I Was Happier. And I still remember the lyrics of it. I wish I was happier, what have I done? What, why does everyone run away from me? Please tell me what I was done. And I was like, oh my God, I was eight. So there was an inkling that not all was right. I did my leaving at 16 and following month basically I pretty much moved to Dublin straight away and it was a massive culture shock for me. I'd never been away from home more than a couple of days. I'd never been away from my family and I didn't really settle into college life too well. I got my degree in the end but I suppose it was during college that the clinical diagnosis first would have raised its, its head. I had broken my ankle. I had been off college for a little while and I didn't really go back for about six weeks. Making the step to go back to college was quite difficult, so my dad knew something was up. I was getting up in the middle of the night to bake. I don't bake, I don't cook, I can't boil an egg. But, you know, went on antidepressants for a few months, picked myself back up and went on with life as best I could. I thought it was a one-off. I didn't realise that it would become something chronic. I remember my older sister saying to me, listen, you know, what if this comes back? And I said, this is never going to come back. I'm going to be fine. What do you mean? It's fixed. I took tablets. It's never going to come back. I'll be fine. And I was in denial pretty much about that for the next 20 years. No one wants to admit it. I didn't want to be known as that mad one bonkers one off the telly. But there's only so many times I can talk to somebody on my, which was my own chat show, about what they're going through and feeling like a complete fraud myself. And I was sitting there with my coping self doing the lo these lovely interviews and they were so empathic and they were all nice and I felt like such a fraud because I wasn't admitting my own problem. And then once I did, it was a weight off my shoulders. I went, yeah, I did an interview for Irish Country Magazine. I went, yeah, well, I have depression and it's a chronic problem. I recently started seeing a psychiatrist. I'm a high functioning coping depressive, if that's one way of putting it. I've never missed work because of my mental health issues, but the effort it takes to do that has actually drained every other part of my life hugely and it's only now I'm realising. I don't actually know what it means to be happy. That might, might sound terrible. I have moments of happiness, but my, my baseline is, is kind of dysphoria. Something bad happens and I go, Phew. So it's the fight, the constant battle, not to go through the floor. My head whirs around the place at night time when I have my insomnia, it's like a hamster in a wheel worrying, what about tomorrow, what about next week? Um, what am I going to do when I'm 90? I have got no children, who's going to mind me? This happens all the time, so I can't think too much about the future. I try as best I can to be in the present. Cliched and all as it sounds, all you can do is take every day as it comes. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Yesterday, forget about it. Whatever I did yesterday is done, it's dusted. I need to mind sleep, exercise, eating well, all these things. They, they might seem simple to the normal person, but for me, it's essential and sometimes it doesn't happen. Like the last month, I haven't been great. I'm not going to lie. I could be quite easily heading into a slump, so I've had to consciously make an effort to pull myself back from that. Unless you've had depression yourself, you just don't understand it. It's annoying to have somebody moping around the place, not doing anything, complaining about everything, being a nasty wagon sometimes for no reason. It looks from the outside in looking that that person's being so selfish. I haven't been the nicest, but I was ill and I didn't realise how bad it was. And when you're very, very sick, there's consequences to it. And when I was sick, I did push people away and they stayed away. One of my sisters in particular, because she's in the medical profession, she was the one who was saying to everybody, listen, Elaine's not just being a bitch. Like she's not well, we need to help her as opposed to let her off. She's made her bed lie on it, you know, that sort of thing. So I think for her, even to this day, she'll check up on me all the time. She worries about me all the time. She'll know if I'm about to go off on little tangent. So it's important for me to have Maggie to touch base with because she'll, she'll always, she knows me like the back of her hand. Life isn't perfect for anybody. We will all have difficulties and issues in life. It's how you cope with the things that are thrown at you. You see someone like me, oh, there she is on the telly, her glamorous job, she's talking to all the celebs. What possibly could be wrong with her life? There's nothing wrong with my life at all. You can take a, a statin if you've cholesterol problems. I mean, I just, just take another form of medication to keep my health in check. It's as simple as that for me.